the only thing more certain than death and taxes is that taxes are the more boring of the two. So let's talk about pizza instead. You see, the best way, no, the only way to talk about taxes is through the visual metaphor of what happens to a pizza when it becomes 40 to 50 times bigger. I mean, this idea is so batch crazy that it'll never be adopted because we won't be able to stop laughing at why it wasn't thought of earlier. Let's say this is the size of our current economy. And this is the slice of that economy that is taxed to create all government revenue, whether that's income tax, capital gains, property, international trade taxes, whatever. Now, that slice does grow or shrink a little depending on the shade of the politics from year to year. But for most countries, most of the time, it's between 25 and 35 percent of the economy. So the whole economy is the tax base and the tax burden or slice is paid for by people and activities that happen in that whole tax base. I think it's fair to say that most people most of the time think we pay too much tax and that might actually turn out to be true. Now, the theory goes that if you grow the pizza through good economic management and innovation, you grow the private areas of the economy, but you also grow the tax base. So the government gets more revenue and can perhaps pay for more services or pay down debt or throw a big party. Over time, even with the best will in the world, the rules of what and who gets taxed has built up into complex layers of obligation, incentives and exemptions, and all based on a very old idea that the economy stays conveniently within national borders and that the tax burden should fall on people and things that turn up conveniently on the bottom line of business statements. What if the economy we thought we were measuring was completely wrong? What if the tax base was actually much larger and we were all paying a lot more tax than we need to? The internet age and the global reach of individual buying power means the biggest corporations in the world can deploy an army of tax specialists to exploit the gaps between the national and the international and then pay a tiny fraction of their total overall profit those big corporations might actually be closer to paying their fair share than you might think. If the economy was measured in terms of payment transactions, i.e. capturing all economic activity that isn't money sitting in a bank account doing nothing, then the pizza actually becomes 40 to 50 times bigger. Now, assuming that government revenue stays the same size, the tax burden across that enormous base becomes tiny, well under 1% in fact, split between the two sides of each transaction we would be sharing the tax burden on such a vast scale that you'd hardly notice it compared to the current tax system. For instance, if your income is 30,000, your current tax is about 6,000 a year. Under the transaction tax system, it would only be 150. How is that possible? Because this system doesn't care how much you earn. It only needs a tiny slice of all economic activity. So it also collects when you buy your cappuccino or pay a bill. But again, compared to the current taxes, the amount is tiny because absolutely every part of the economy is contributing in the same tiny way. By now, you might be thinking this is some new starry-eyed policy dreamt up by anorak lefties hunkered down in their open-toed sandals secretly preparing to stealth tax everyone. But it's actually a proposal that was presented to the US President's Advisory Panel on Federal Tax Reform in Washington in 2005 by a professor of economics at the University of Chicago, who was himself a student of Milton Friedman, the free market's greatest intellectual champion. It's a conservative proposal and it models all the implications on tax avoidance, spending and share trading, and including how to fairly deal with those who prefer cash. And I'll include a link to the paper in the description. Let's go crazy with it and just see if it can get out of control and pretend you earn 100,000 a year. On top of that, you somehow manage to invest 2 million that you had sitting around, which then goes up in value and makes you another million in capital gains. You also manage to transact more than three times your annual salary because you are not only spending, but also receiving payments and moving money around lots. The tax bill for that kind of wealth would normally be in the hundreds of thousands, but with a transaction tax, it would be just short of 12,000. If you were a large corporation with a revenue of 1 billion with costs of 800 million, your tax bill would currently be around 20 million. With a transaction tax, it would be a quarter of that. And because such a tax would be automated through every payment that's made in the economy in real time, there's no need for tax returns, audits, or even a tax department. We've grown so used
used to the idea that governments should know how much we earn, spend and accumulate that it's almost blasphemy to think that it's none of their business. But if the government can get all the revenue it needs without the assumption of tax avoidance and prying into our personal affairs, then there's no need for tax compliance and therefore no HMRC. Why didn't the Bush administration take it up? Probably because it would work. That wouldn't be great for those that absolutely insist on reserving the right to pay zero tax forever. The current tax regime allows for those that know the rules and exemptions to keep tax in its optional role. It's currently accepted as tax efficiency. In fact, it's become so brazen that the first question my mother-in-law was asked by her financial advisors after her husband died recently was, how do you feel about paying tax? Ergo, it's kind of optional really, but how much our fees are will depend on how much we cook the books for you. And you know what? The only reason this culture has developed is because people perceive they are being taxed too much. And based on this alternative model, I think they're right. In this system, very low tax is not only encouraged, it's essential. But for it to work, there cannot be any exemptions, not even for the poorest, because exemptions would lead back to the same bureaucracy that we already have. There's a separate but connected argument for a universal dividend or basic income to cover the equivalent of the tax threshold at least. But that's another video. Does this bake your noodle? It should. Have a read of the original paper if you really want to understand how it would work in practice and how it would be rolled out. Let me know in the comments if this is something that should be considered again and what you'd do with the money you weren't paying to the tax man. Oh, it's cold. It took too long to do it.